Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Starting with this video, we're going to talk about text analytics. So we'll first talk about the basics, uh, like preprocessing, representation of documents, and computing work importance. And then after that, we'll talk about very generalizable and powerful technique called latent semantic indexing, and also its underlying mathematical tool called SVD, singular value decomposition. So we'll start with uh, the basics first. So text is everywhere. For example, on the web, uh, you can see a lot of web pages or on social media, like on Twitter, Facebook. You have a lot of these tweets and posts, which are also text. And for academic, uh, in academia, you also have like, academic articles, like, let's say from Google Books, uh, from journals and conferences, like from ACM, IEEE. Or in entertainment, you can have uh, song lyrics or closed captioning uh, for videos. Or in uh, healthcare, you can have like, medical uh, records or EHR electronic health records. So all of these are texts. And uh, there are many important questions that you would want to ask and to study when analyzing large amount of text. For example, you might want to do uh, classification. So you want to know uh, what are the genres or the topics uh, of books and articles. You may also want to do something we call sentiment analysis or tone classification, as in for online reviews, like let's say for tweets. So is it saying something good, something negative, uh, for example? Or you may want to do something uh, in forensics, for example, establishing the authorship of articles or authenticity or doing like plagiarism detection. So before diving deeper into text analytics, I want to first mention that there are a number of popular tools that uh, you can use today right away. So these are libraries like Stanford NLP, OpenNLP, NLTK, a Python library, and so on. So all these tools offer essential features like tokenization, uh, sentence segmentation, uh, finding out the part of speech for each word. Uh, or doing something we call entity uh, extraction. So you can see some example at the bottom there. For example, uh, the first sentence, you can extract like which person is uh, the president of China. Uh, so that you can figure out China's location. Um, also, it can do something like at the example below, uh, when you see in the second part of the sentence, it says, I showed off his familiarity. Um, and we will know that his actually refer to the president. Um, so these are the things that this library can uh, already do for you. So, um, so in this video, we'll learn about the basics. But once you learn about the basics, you can immediately use these tools uh, to help you. So in the videos of this text analytics module, we will cover several topics, uh, which include the basics such as preprocessing using stemming, representing documents using something we call backup words model, um, how to compute importance of words in a document, and also how to rank words and rank documents. And lastly, we'll talk about a very powerful generalizable technique called latent semantic indexing that can help you find concepts or topics among a large collection of documents, uh, which will help us in retrieval, uh, recommendation, and much more. So let's start with stemming. So stemming means reducing words to their stems or their base forms. So an example would be, say, if you're giving the words like compute, computer, com uh, computing. So all of them we know uh, uh, about computing in general. And the stem of all these words would be C-U-M-P-U-T. So it removed the E, the I-N-G, the E-R, and so on. So, uh, so this is what we call stemming. And there are a number of uh, algorithms that you can do uh, this already, such as like, stripping the suffixes, uh, doing something we call a table lookup. So essentially having a gigantic table. Uh, so the, the entries could be like compute, computing, computer, and the value could be C-U-M-P-U-T. So that means whenever you see a word like compute, computing, you can automatically uh, look up the, the stem. A document consists of many sentences, uh, which in turn uh, consists of words. So how do we represent a document such that uh, it can be easily processed by a computer or an algorithm. So that's a common question that we have. And uh, a typical approach is to use what we call the back of words model. Uh, what that means is that and imagine that we have a bag, like let's say a big plastic bag. And uh, let's say every word we are allowed to print it out. And we put every word into this bag. And you just shake it all up. So that means you are uh, ignoring any of the ordering among the words. So essentially, what you end up getting is a bag of words, very literally a bag of words. And the reason that we want to do it is for simplicity, right? because now we only need to do some basic counting instead of really worrying about the ordering. And uh, what that also means is now our text documents, or each document, becomes a vector of numbers. 
So for example, here, let's say I have two documents. Uh, both are really short. The first one is I like visualization. And the second document is I like data. So just looking at these two phrases, you already know that there are four unique words. I like data visualization. And you can uh, assign a number to each of them. So you say I is 1, like is 2, data is 3, visualization is 4. So once we have this kind of word to uh, number or ID assignment, then you can turn the two documents or the two phrases into a factor of numbers. For example, I like visualization now become, becomes 1101, right? Because it has the word one, uh, I, and it has the word like, uh, no data, it has visualization, so 101. And then for I like data, now you would turn it into 1110. So there's a problem with this simple back of word models, however, um, is that we assign uh, the same weight, which is 1, to every single word. Um, so that means as soon as we see a word, we give it a 1. And you can imagine there is a problem with this, which is that now we consider all words as equally important. But in practice, we can imagine some words might be more important, more meaningful, more characteristics, uh, characteristic of the document then how do we express that importance? So we can use a technique called TF-IDF, uh, which stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. And it's a very fancy name. And it's also a very popular approach and because it's very effective in practice and also very easy to understand. So the definition of TF-IDF is that we want to compute a word's importance score in a document among and documents. So just even this uh, short phrase of description, there's already a few important things. So uh, one is that the score is uh, computed relative, uh, relative to a document. And also, when we compute a score, we need to consider the whole document collection of n documents. So when do we want to use TF-IDF score? So uh, if you remember from the previous screen, so actually any time we uh, use uh, the back of word model instead of using 0 and 1, uh, which where uh, one is to, to indicate existence of the word. Now we can replace those ones with the words TF-IDF score. So that means anytime you use, use word count, you can essentially use TF-IDF. So how do we compute it? Right. So the final TF-IDF score of a word is actually the product of two parts. The first part is TF, term frequency, and the second part is IDF, uh, inverse document frequency. So TF, term frequency, is easy to understand. It just means how many times that a word appear in a document. So naturally, this number will be high if the term appear many times in a document. And for the IDF, uh, the second part, uh, it stands for inverse document frequency. So that means we want to find out how many documents that contain the term that we're considering. Uh, but instead of putting it in the numerator, we actually put it in a denominator. So the numerator is actually n, the number of documents. So uh, the reason we do this, we want to penalize the common words. right? So common words could be like uh, stop words like the, a, n, and so on. So these words will appear in virtually all documents. So that means there will be a number very close to n. And since it's a denominator, right? so uh, when n divided by this number, which is very close to n, then it's actually very close to 1. And when it's close to 1, then um, you take a log of that number, it's close to 0. So that means IDF score would be 0 or close to 0 um, for the very common word. And the final score is the two parts combined, so TF times IDF. So for example, if you're considering, let's say, the stop word, right, a common word like the, uh, it would have very high term frequency score. So TF is very high. Um, but then for IDF, it's very low, right? Because it appears uh, in all documents. So that means the product, the TF IDF score for the is very low. And while for another term, let's say um, that only appear mostly in one document, it appear many times. So uh, term frequency score will be high, but then inverse document frequency will be low because it, it only appear in like one or two documents. So when you multiply these two terms together, then the final score for this particular word uh, will have a high score. And we call this word is pretty characteristic of the document. So it's important, relevant um, in that document. So at the high level, our backup words approach and the related TF-IDF approach of computing word importance uh, essentially turn all documents into vectors of numbers. 
and also all queries that you might want to make into vectors. And the main reason for using uh, this is so-called like vector space model is actually like simplicity. So vector space model, again, this is a pretty uh, fancy word. Right? So what that really means is now you're expressing everything as a vector uh, of a number of dimensions. So in our case of using uh, vector words or using TFID score to encode every document, uh, so that's pretty easy to understand. So if document, one, one vector. And so besides simplicity, uh, by turning everything to vectors, that also means that we can use all the machine learning and data mining techniques that we have learned so far, such as like classification, clustering, and so on, to operate on all these vectors. So what that means is that now, let's say you want to search for documents, uh, essentially we're just trying to find similar vectors. Right? And also if we want to say, oh, I want to group documents together doing clustering, essentially that means we're clustering similar vectors. So in this video, we'll talk about the basics and text analytics, such as doing the processing, doing stamping, and doing TF-IDF uh, to compute the word important score.